Hello everyone. I'm Dr. Sundara Koganti, consultant pulmonologist, sleep specialist and lung transplant physician at Fortis Hospitals Vadapalni Chennai. On the occasion of this World TB Day, today I'm here to enlighten you about what is tuberculosis, how can we diagnose it, how can we prevent it and how to treat tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is one of the form of bacteria. It is called as Mycobacterium tuberculosis. And there are other variants of atypical mycobacterium, which is most commonly seen in raw milk, which is not boiled. In such milk, infected milks can have this mycobacterium bacteria in them. So when you consume this raw milk, sometimes you are prone to get infection. Anyone whose immunity is on the lower side, either because of diabetes or those who are on immunosuppressive drugs, if their immunity on the lower side, they are prone to get tuberculous infection. In tuberculosis, lungs are the most common organs which are infected. If lungs are infected, it is called as pulmonary tuberculosis. Any other organs other than the lungs are infected, it is called as extrapulmonary tuberculosis. In tuberculosis, all the organs from the head to toe can be infected except the hair and the nail. Pulmonary tuberculosis usually spreads from one person to another. If you are staying in a closed uh, isolated closed isolated houses or somewhere which with much crowded people of more than five or six in a small place when a person coughs it it will be transferred into the air as tuberculosis is an airborne disease when you inhale the infected air the other person can have higher chances of getting infected in pulmonary tuberculosis most of the patients usually present with severe persistent cough for longer duration Usually the symptoms will be for 2 to 3 months of duration. Initially they present with severe cough with lot of sputum expectoration. They may have fever for longer duration on and off. Usually low grade fever mostly in the evening rise of temperature with the night flush. Sometimes during the nights they may be having sweating and all. And most of the patients have loss of appetite and loss of weight. And the most other most common symptom would be patients during coughing, they may cough out blood. That is called hemoptysis. It's one of the most common symptom of pulmonary tuberculosis. Whereas in the other extra pulmonary tuberculosis, like lymph node involvement, there may be nodal enlargement in the neck. And in case of genito-urinary tuberculosis, the urinary infections can be there. And other GI TB, skin TB are also more common. Brain TB like CNS, meningitis is also more common in tuberculosis. Pulmonary tuberculosis can be diagnosed by doing sputum examination, by sputum smear examination, sputum gene expert, by taking chest x-rays or CT scan to rule out active tuberculosis infection. Whereas in case of cervical nodes or abdominal tuberculosis, abdominal nodes, you need to go and do ultrasound abdomen. Or ultrasound neck. In some cases you may require to do ultrasound uh, CT abdomen. To diagnose the extra pulmonary tuberculosis we may require to do ultrasound neck to diagnose the nodal TB, cervical tuberculosis, cervical nodal tuberculosis and in case of abdominal lymphadenopathy or genitourinary TB you may need to go for CT abdomen. In case of meningitis CT brain to rule out the tuberculoma is of useful is of much use so all the patients who are having pulmonary tuberculosis when they cough they are more prone to spread the infection from one person to another person so to avoid that until the patient has turned sputum negative that is the initial first two months patient should be isolated or should wear a mask when coming into the gatherings to prevent the spread of infection and the next most important thing is try to avoid spitting in the common areas where the sputum can con contain mycobacterium tuberculosis bacteria and can spread from person to person. So it's better to avoid spitting in the common areas. Those patients diagnosed with having tuberculosis, if there is no drug resistance, they can just take the four recommended drugs, standard recommended drugs for treating tuberculosis like rifampicin, isoniazid, pyrazinamide and ethambutol for a duration of minimum of six months depending on the organ involved. In case of bone TB or CNS TB, we usually suggest the treatment for about one year.
whereas in pulmonary tuberculosis a short course chemotherapy of 6 months is sufficient to be considered as completely treated always all the tuberculosis patient should complete a course of complete course of 6 months of duration and taking tablets for 2 months and stopping that their symptoms are, are better is not considered as a complete cure for tuberculosis. In case of tuberculosis infection, which shows some drug resistance, that resistance through either rifampicin or INH, it is called as multi-drug resistant TB, MDR TB, which is very alarming as we are having more number of MDR TBs being diagnosed in the recent days. So there is no drug to treat the MDR patients and you should be on. So treatment for MDR tuberculosis is a challenging thing in recent days. As patients have to take a lot of medications if they are diagnosed as MDR TB for a minimum duration of two years, which is very difficult for the patient to follow it at regular intervals. So those tuberculosis patients, if they are uh, not resistant to any drugs or even though they have multi-drug resistance, all the TB medications have lot and lot of side effects. Even if the patients have any of the side effects, immediately they have to come and contact the doctors, but they should not stop taking the tuberculosis medications. After starting the tuberculosis medications, we would like to suggest the patients to repeat their sputum tests after two months. If their sputum status becomes negative after two months, we can just come down on few medicines and continue the remaining medicines for of minimum of four to six months after the intensive phase. Yes, definitely. If tuberculosis is left untreated, it can cause, so if the tuberculosis is left untreated, it can cause a lot of other complications. It may spread from one organ to the other organ through the blood spread that is called as a hematogenous spread which can involve the other organs like the brain, liver, spleen, abdomen, other nodes, lungs, pleural effusions, that is the collection of fluid between the pleural uh, layers, pleural effusion. Tuberculosis is a deadly disease. If it is left untreated, it can spread the infection from a single organ to the other organs like the brain, liver, spleen, eyes, lymph nodes, pleural cavities, uh, pleural effusion, in the pleural cavity these are all the disseminated of disseminated this is all called as dissemination of tuberculosis from one organ to the other this is mainly because of the hematogenous spread or through the blood it can spread from one organ to other organs early diagnosis and early uh, initiation of treatment for tuberculosis gives very good outcomes yes there is a vaccine for tuberculosis which is called as bcg vaccine which we give to the infants immediately after the birth on the left deltoid where you can see the scarring of the BCG in every individual. It can protect you from getting the severe infection but it may not completely avoid from getting the tuberculosis infection. Early detection of tuberculosis if you have chronic cough for more than two months kindly go and do your sputum examination and rule out tuberculosis at the earlier times and you can get good results by taking adequate treatment for tuberculosis. Thank you.